Welcome back to How You Slice It. Um, Joe's Rotisseria. Did, did yep. I say that right? You said uh, so it perfect. Joe uh, Brignoni. Yes. Uh, Joe's best advice to anyone looking to open up a pizzeria is to understand what makes them unique, especially, you know, unique compared to the other 75,000 plus exactly. pizza shops uh, around the country, and then double down on that. If you bring new and, and interesting pizzas to the table, the customers will follow. Yeah. Um, and that's how today's uh, guest, obviously Joe, uh, grew his business by creating unique pies, exactly. telling that story through social media. Uh, and that has led to now two successful locations yes. and growing. And I'm really excited for you to be here and, and for, for you Thank to tell you the story. Me. It's, it's been a pleasure. I've been with Slice since you guys started and uh, it's been a good growth, you know, with the two locations. And now we got the pizza truck. So uh, we can literally come to your backyard or any private event that you have. We do a lot of weddings. We'll it's talk been, more about the truck. I like that yeah, idea. Yeah, this is the first time I, I hear I about that. I love the truck. Oh, my God. But going back to, like, early days, from what I understand, you were maybe 20, 21. Yeah, I got my first place in Roselle Park off Craigslist. I was uh, 21 at the time. I was working at a pizza place. And, you know, I was doing a lot of crazy stuff. I was making the garlic knot pies. And, you know, for a true Italian, I guess it was, it was just too much at the time. It was like, you know, me showing you a an iPhone in the 1990s. You would look at it and be like, ah, I want to play my Nokia, the snake phone. You right. know what I mean? It's too much for people. So uh, uh, he told me to, you know, if I wanted to do it, open up my own spot. So, you know, three months later, uh, I went on Craigslist. I, I actually went to AC. I lost like maybe like five Gs that <laughs> I, I came home crying. And uh, that next day I went on Craigslist. I was like, you know what? I got to really gamble on myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm 21. I was like, I had the money and uh, it was 30 G's, 31K, and uh, it was a failing business at the time. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to double down on myself. And I was 21. I said, so if I fail, I can always, you know, you go know, work somewhere up, else. Yeah, yeah. Pick up the next year, make another 60K or whatever. Yeah. Uh, working for somebody else. But uh, it was just my one shot. And I was like, you know what? Let's take the shot. And it uh, worked out great. And I think uh, my first six months was. A disaster it was a uh, you know really it took me a lot of maturing because i had to run a business at 21 and like finding staff and employees like when people are like older than you like you know you're you're 21 years old you're your you're main pizza guy's like 38 yeah you know what and i mean you and gotta like, be their boss and yeah and you gotta yeah. kind of like tame them and it's like it's really tough because at times you know the guy who's 38 years old is looking, you know, he's like, how's this guy doing it? And it's just like, I just got the place off Craigslist. Yeah, you have to you know earn I mean? that respect. <laughs> you have to and earn. I was using a such an old oven and everything, so I really didn't get to improve my business for like a year or two. So before that, uh, you said you worked at a place. How did you learn how to make food? How to, I went walk to, me through uh, even before your business. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I went to uh, Walt Disney uh, Culinary School. They had like a one-year program for me, and uh, I signed up for it through my college, to Union County College, mm -hmm. and uh, it was great. It was probably the best thing I've ever done. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So. It was a one-year program. Afterwards, they gave me a job. I worked there, and I was a Magic Kingdom line cook. Um, so you got to work in all That's the different cool. restaurants, <laughs> pizza, all the like fast service stuff. And like, I just fell in love with customer service, and uh, it was great. And then uh, after the two years, you know, I was like 20 at the time. I was about to be 21. I was like, I had to go back to Jersey. You know what I mean? And uh, it was just, you know, I was getting 13 bucks an hour, but. At the end of the day, I got a Fortune 500 company on my resume, so that's right. I could get a job anywhere, yeah. so uh, it was great. And then uh, I so came you moved back. to Jersey, yeah, and then and then started working at a pizza shop. Yeah, I started working at a pizza shop. What was the name it of the pizza was, shop? Uh, Joe's. Okay. Joe's uh, famous in yeah. uh, in uh, Vauxhall. Okay. Yeah, so I worked there, and then uh, and that was it. You know, it was history from there. You know? Yeah. This is our eighth episode. Oh, wow. And you are the second person to tell me that you bought your pizza shop off of Craigslist. Right. Craig. The other person is uh, Hockey, who owns Champion Pizza in the city here. Wow. Very, that guy's a legend. Very, very popular. Exactly. Yeah. And he found his first shop on Craigslist as well. Wow. There's something about Craigslist. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know what it is? Like, uh, it, if you, it's a cash site. So, like, if you're there and you want to buy something right out, mm -hmm. you, can, you can go do that. So, uh, I think, you know... It's available. There's no, it's a, it's a buyer and a seller. When you're working with a third party, there's a lot of commission that gets involved yep. or who's screwing who over in the deal. Yep. 
And uh, with Brexit is just direct to the yeah, to the seller, the direct consumer. Yeah. And I think you know uh, he was failing at the time, and he said, "Listen, I'm failing. I'm six months behind on my rent." You know, I even took over his number because I thought it was the smartest thing to do in the world. And I took over his number. And when I took over his number, I actually took over his debt. Because oh, yeah, interesting. I, you took over his phone number. Yeah. What was I the name of the shop? His number is called Bellissimo's. Bellissimo's Pizza. Yeah, in right? Roselle Park. And I took over his number because I wanted some customer base. Yep. I didn't want to start with a fresh number and have no customer base at all. I was That's 21. Right. I was like, all right, I'm going to take your number over. And he was like, hey, yeah, no problem. You know, a month later, I get a bill for twenty five hundred, three grand. I'm like, what's going on? From the here? phone company. From the phone company. He hadn't paid it. Six months, yeah. he hasn't paid it. Yeah. So I'm like, or no, it was a year or two. He didn't pay yeah. it or something like that. It was crazy, and um, I don't know. I had to wind up paying it to keep the number, and I was like, it's either I pay. It was like fifteen or seventeen hundred at the time, and I, I just paid it because I I thought the value of the number was worth it. And then like to think of it, like the customer base was just not the customer base that. You know, you ended up building yeah, your business with building my business with because yeah. like everybody wanted, you know, these like, I don't know, like chopped salads and stuff like that. I'm not a salad guy. So like, <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to sit here and, you know, <laughs> different clientele. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what was the hardest part about that that process? Yeah. You ended up finding a place on Craigslist. Yeah. But then you had to open it. Was, was there a lot of hurdles? I think the most hurdles was finding a, a good food distributor that wasn't taking advantage of you. Mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of food distributors out here, week after week, they tax on five, ten, twenty dollars on your items, and that adds up week after week. Now you look at a six months toll and they're adding ten, twenty dollars on a bag of flour or cheese or a carton of cream, you know, that's gonna hurt you. You know what I mean? So like I think finding a good distributor that you rely on. Um, having premium equipment, don't go cheap on the equipment. If you have equipment, you can only be as good as your equipment allows you to be. And I tell this to everyone. If you want to go out and buy yourself a Mercedes and have yourself an oven that barely works at the shop, that oven is what's paying for the Mercedes. Correct. So if you don't have a good oven, you're never going to have a good Mercedes. It's like the factory, like exactly. a great factory. Me, can build I a drive Mercedes. a Chevy Trailblazer. Right. But all my equipment in my shops is mint. I got a, I got a blast chiller. I got the top of the line ovens. I got. Mm -hmm. I want the best of the best because when people come in, all my kitchens are open. So when you see the equipment, I want you to say, wow, this guy really cares about what he does. So you know? so walk us through, uh, you said all your kitchens are open. In, in as much detail as you can share, walk us through what one sees when they walk into a Joe's. So when you walk into one of my locations, you're gonna see you're gonna see a pizzas slices that you've never seen before. Mm. You're gonna see a garlic knot slice. You're gonna see pinwheel slices. You're gonna see a triple thread slice. You're gonna see a three foot mega slice. You're gonna see so many slices that you would never see at any other pizzeria. And when you Google the word pizzeria. There's probably 8 billion pizzerias in the United States, right? <laughs> there's 78,000. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's 8 billion because everybody wants to open up a pizzeria. That's right. I feel like, you know, the year of 2022 is, I've, I've never seen so many pizzerias open up and so many pizzerias fail in the same year. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So when I say 8 billion, I, I think it's because there's just so much going like mm -hmm. to open. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? It's nuts. So the, the food is really unique. I'll get into that in a second. What about the ambiance? You said the kitchen is open. What led to that? This, like, did you want everything to be really transparent? I wanted like when you come into my location to see the kitchen. I feel like in most shops and, and most restaurants, their restaurant is so nice in the front. But mm -hmm. when you see their kitchen in the back, it is an absolute disaster. You're sliding all over the floor from the grease. There's French fries on the floor or there's chicken on the ground. Oof. You're not able to see that. And when you go into a place, you look at their bright ambience on the outside and then you see the kitchen. You're like, wow, would I really eat that? So that's why, you know, some diners I, I wouldn't eat at, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not me personally. I'm not a diner guy. Right. But uh, <laughs> you just got to be in the industry to know what I'm talking about. But I just want people to know when you come to my location, you're eating at a clean establishment and you can see the people that are making your food are clean as well. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's super key. You know what I mean? Hygiene is key. Employee hygiene is key. You know what I mean? I know um, it's hard to kind of tell, you know, someone how to step it up, you know, with the hygiene. But like uh, it's super key. And I think... With an open kitchen, you have no choice 
but to have a clean shirt on, make yourself look nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, so and I that, think that's what's key. And yeah, and, and I imagine it's played a really important role in, yeah, in the yeah, success super, of your locations. Super. How did you decide on the location you went with? So I know it was Bellissimo Pizza prior, yeah, founded yeah. on Craigslist, but what made you say yes to that specific location? Um, the reason why I picked uh, Roselle Park, uh, we're 27 minutes from Times Square uh, on a on a bus. So mm -hmm. you can take a bus from Times Square, 27 minutes right to Roselle Park. I think what made me big there was having the chance to uh, have people come from the city. And we've had so many influencers like Food God, Steve Will Do It stop by. And I think it being so close to like Teterboro Airport that so many celebrities would just stop by because they're either on their way down to AC or they're heading to the city because they're coming in from Newark. So we're like 15 minutes from Newark Airport. So I think as far as like a, a standpoint to travel for food, because I know a lot of people who are foodies do that, I feel like it's such a great short travel. If you're coming from the city or you're coming from North Jersey, 15, 20 minute ride, you're like, ah, it's not that bad. Let's yep. get in the car, let's do it, you know, so. Now all these people, they don't just find out about a pizza shop, right? Yeah. You, you have to work, you have to put yourself out there in order for them to find out about you. And what you're, yeah. where you really succeeded is you've created a, a really prominent brand on social media, whether it's TikTok or Instagram. Um, and this is an area that a lot of shop owners want to crack, want to unlock, yeah. but I don't think everyone truly understands what it takes to actually do it. How, what was your What was your recipe? I think my recipe is uh, doubling down on it and realizing how much people spend on social media. Like mm. if you look at it, if you sit down and just look yourself in the mirror and you can just look yourself, your screen time on social media, like people wake up before they even brush their teeth, before they even, <laughs> you know, take a piss in the morning. They're going on social media. Yep. They're checking their emails. They're checking their Facebook. They're checking who liked their picture or who's looking at their story. So um, I think, you know, my opinion as an operator, if I can snag six to eight seconds out of your life in the morning and imprint an image from something and later you come back and spend, you know, buy a pie or buy 30, a order stick, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? I think, you know, that free social media tool, I look at it as, as a double down. Because now I'm going to double down on that and I'm going to turn it into money. But what was your what was your recipe in terms of to the extent you can share? So, like, how did you actually become good at it? Yeah. So what I started doing was I started studying all my videos and pictures that went viral. Um, so anything that went viral, if I posted a video that went viral, I would see why it went viral. I would study uh, maybe the angle or the lighting or maybe the texture of what I was shooting or was there a cheese pill? You know what I mean? Um, so th like, like for instance, on TikTok, how I want to make a video of viral is I'll have like a three foot mega slice and I'll put, you know, <laughs> you have a three foot slice. <laughs> yeah. We have a three foot mega slice. We make it on a sheet pan yep. and um, I have like uh, an employee hold it up and we'll put hot honey on it. And then I'll drizzle a little hot honey on the, on the arm or something. Mm -hmm. So what that does is that creates controversy. Now, when you create controversy, that creates comments. When you create comments, that creates the algorithm going up for you. Mm. So the controversy, you want good controversy, obviously. Yeah. Um, and like me getting a little honey on the employee's arm is great controversy because now they'll, they'll crack a little joke about it or, yep. you know, they'll say, oh, you know, save some for later or whatever. And so now just do that, something different. Yeah. Do something different and ordinary that makes you watch the video twice like, the videos that go viral is because you did something by mistake. Yeah, unexpected. And if you can do an unexpected thing expectedly, that's going to go viral. Got it. So that's my uh, that's my key. So you spent a lot of time studying like exactly. social media I mean, algorithm, like yeah. to understanding what makes for great content, what yeah, doesn't. For sure. But I think in order to do that, then you just have to kind of put yourself out there. And a lot of people are not willing to do that. I look at it this way: if you really care about growing and you care about being the next thing you got to double down on yourself you got to double down on your self brand like uh like this month for instance uh i grew my main page like uh my chef with joe brignoni page uh i had four thousand followers and in three weeks i grown it to almost thirteen thousand followers wow. and um it was just i had a couple videos that got like uh two million views i piggybacked off those videos and i think 
what most people do is when they go viral, they just chill out. They just, all right, I went viral. I'm chilling. You know, but I think, you know, when you go viral, you should double down, piggyback off the wave and ride the wave as long as you can. Yep. Um, because if you don't, you never know when the next wave's going to come. What you know? gives you the confidence to, and maybe not the confidence, but like there's a common theme here, which is you're not afraid to just put yourself out there, yeah. both in terms of social media and your own personality. But the same same applies to the products you're making. You're making products. Yeah. I have to imagine sometimes you're like, I don't even know if this thing's going to be good. I mean, there's like, been... Walk us through that. There's been so many things that never hit the shelf, but uh, everything that does hit the shelf, it has to taste good. It has to be... My name's on it. So yep. anything that we try or make or craziness, there's some stuff that I would never show anybody. What are some stuff that never made <laughs> hit the shelf that you tried? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> let me think. Uh <laughs> You know, let's start with the thing that you created because I know it's, I think it's the triple threat, yeah, but the triple people, threat. people yeah, don't yeah. know what that is. Yeah, it's the calzone, but the thing you created that, that really took off, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, with that, uh, that was my first year in business and uh, it was I hit the six month mark and I was like not making any money. I hadn't took a paycheck in six months, Wow. seven months. And I was like, I really need something to blow me up or I'm going to work for something. Mm -hmm. so, so your business was like, you're six was, months in. I it was, was probably going to fail. Interesting. I was, I and so it took this it. one product that just changed everything. Changed my whole life. Now changed this my is life. this <laughs> it changed my whole life. This is what I want to talk about. It changed like, my whole ooh, entire life. That one day you threat. woke up. Yeah. You woke up and you're like, I've got to like I walk us through that. So I was literally uh, at the shop and I had made a calzone, but I made it. I, I when I folded the calzone over, I made it too big, so I had a lot of excess dough. Yep. So I was like, ah this probably could be a pizza, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we, we tried it out without the garlic knots and the calzone busted. So I was like, maybe if I put some garlic knots on it, it'll weigh out the, right. the calzone. It'll keep it in place. Yeah. yeah, so we put the garlic knots on the calzone and there was no bust. And it looked like a crown and it looked like, wow. And I posted a video and I had like 500 followers at the time and it got like 200,000 views. Insane. And then like, I got so many emails from like Thrillist, Insider. So uh, we any person that hit me up, I was like, all right, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And um, next thing you know, like my Instagram went from like five thousand to twenty thousand to forty thousand to fifty thousand. And then all these people wanted to try it. Yeah, and then we were like, I then we were on Guys Fieri's Grocery Games. Like that was nuts. You know what I mean? Yep. Like it was just like an experience and a half meeting Guy Fieri. And uh, he's just like my childhood idol. So like to meet him, like I would never thought, you know, a pizza owner from Jersey is going to get flown out to, you know, undisclosed location and be on his show, you know? How did the Guy Fieri opportunity come to be? <sighs> he literally, uh, so I'm not an email guy at all. As you guys can tell, uh, my, my secretary <laughs> did this whole setup. If it wasn't for her, my, my mom. Yeah, <laughs> she didn't set yeah. it up. I'm I'm just really not an email person. So like, yeah. if anybody's gonna like wants to really contact me, uh, they're gonna call the landline. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had uh, Food Network producers call the landline, and we thought it was a joke. Like my mom was like, "Yeah, Food Network said they're on the line," and I was like, "It was like a Friday night at like, you know, seven thirty. We were slammed, Busy, yeah. Yeah. slammed." Yeah. And I was like, "Hello," <laughs> and he was like, "She was like, yeah. Would you like to be on? You know." Would you like to try out for this? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely would Why like. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> this is. Just, are you, I was like, are you serious? Like, is this like a prank phone call? And uh, yeah, it wasn't. It was nice and great. So, and uh, after that, you know, we did a little tryout, did like a million Skype calls, and uh, you know, we got flown out to an undisclosed location, yeah. and uh, it was great. Congratulations! But yeah. it all started with this triple threat. All started with the triple threat. If and I didn't then, make the triple threat, yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't be here right now. And so, what are some other uh, some other drops uh, or releases? The thunder sticks. Uh, what are the thunder sticks? Thunder sticks is a one foot long mozzarella stick. That's that's how I got uh, Food God to come in. And interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's how a I one met foot Food long God. mozzarella yeah. stick. It was like a one foot long mozzarella stick. I had Food God DM me on Instagram, and he was like, "Hey, I want to check these out." And, I was like, all right, got you. And then I'm hungry, man. <laughs> six months later, he just like comes into the shop with like, you know, like I have like a Rolls Royce pull up to my shop and I'm just like, what? Who, for who's the that? Thunder you know what I mean? Like for the Thunder <laughs> Sticks, you know? So yep. it was a great experience. And uh, I think, you know, that was like one of those things that almost didn't work either because if you don't have the right equipment, 
you're just going to have a limp a limp stick that's going to break on you. And I think, you know, if you try to copy that product, like your customer is going to expect a thunder stick that stands up, that you can yep. take a picture with, that you can hold. And if you don't have that product, you're never going to get the money for, for what you want. And no one product. wants a limp stick. Nobody wants a limp stick. <laughs> Nobody wants a limp stick. <laughs> Sorry, I had, I had to. <laughs> um, if I were to summarize your success so far, it's focus on great, clean, transparent location where where the customer comes in yeah. and kind of sees where the food is made, has confidence that it's clean and yeah. run properly, make great food, yeah. but really pull people in with creativity. I always tell people, be yourself. Don't copy nobody. Be yourself. So 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 talk so, more about that. Be yourself. A let, lot of let people, go. Yeah. A lot of people try to copy what we do at Joe's Rotisserie, mm -hmm. and I respect it to the fullest extent because it shows me that we're doing the right thing, and it's it's an honor. It's an honor. Like anytime someone copies me, I feel proud because like I'm like, all right, you know, this guy really sees me as a as an up figure in his life that mm -hmm. you know he's got to take the approach to copy what I'm doing. Um, so we are truly humbled by it, but at the same time, you can have a hit just like me. You yeah. know what I mean? You can do something crazy, like make a fagacha, a stuffed fagacha with, you know, whatever. But There's a ton of ideas that I have in my green book that I haven't brought out yet, but uh, it's just, you know. Yeah, look, what I've learned is um, you can try and copy anybody, Yeah. and the customer knows it. The customer knows exactly. when it's not authentic. Yeah. They just kind of know that you're trying to either be someone else or like someone else. Exactly. But when you're authentic and you're being yeah. yourself and you're creating something because out of your pure joy or yeah. or because you're trying to survive. And I do the, have a, a customer base that, you know, may think it's gimmicky or whatever, but at the same time, like pizza is sauce and cheese. You know, if you want a steakhouse experience, you're going to go and get it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I think, you know, the people that think it's gimmicky, they're going to get curious one day and try it out. I but they know you. about it. Yeah, Whether they know they think about it's gimmick, and I promise yeah. you the curiosity is going to kill the cat one day. I promise that's right. you. That's right. So uh, I think that's the best part because you get to see people's reactions yep. to the monstrosity coming out the oven. You know, it Definitely. So. What was, um, do you remember your first day opening up the shop? What was, uh, what was like? My first day, wow. I'll were you, were you scared somebody was like, people were not going to like your pizza? Like what was, what was, what was going through your mind? I was just scared of people calling me a kid. Mm. And uh, the first week, everyone called me a kid. Like whenever I had an argument, they, or not an argument, anything went wrong, they asked for the owner and I came up. It was like, it was like a total disrespect, you know, cause I was 21. They didn't believe you were the they owner. They didn't believe I was the owner. And right. they, they were like, you're just a kid. And I'm like, if I'm a kid, why are you paying me 56 bucks for my pizza? Right. You know what I mean? Why are you standing in front of here, yeah. you know, trying this pizza out, you know, if I'm a kid, like if I'm a kid, why why do i have this establishment right now right. you know what i mean so like i just wanted to gain the respect from my customer base and i think me at 21 if i can go back and tell myself something i would just say got to do your time you gotta know do you got to do your time got to do your time if you want that respect you know well, what i think what were the first uh you know 6 months like i i assume you were in the shop Failing. open open Failing. to close right 7 days Didn't a week take a paycheck for 6 months I was living in Jersey City on JFK and McAdoo for five hundred dollars a month in a mm. in a in a rooming house. It was nuts. And just making it to the shop. Yeah, I mean, I got into all a day. big fight with my parents and stuff like that. And uh, when I came back home, everything was great, you know. Yeah. Uh, but before I left, you know, it was it was tough, you know. So like when I came back home, I didn't want to come back home living with my mom at twenty one because I already lived, you know, since eighteen. Like mm -hmm. living at Disney, it was just. By myself the whole time so like you can't my mom was strict you know yeah I mean? yeah <laughs> I, I i bet um and then what led to the second shop like walk us through uh, then what, your always, decision to, to launch my mom a second always shop. took me to the beach and i always told her driving home from the beach you can see all my kindergarten notes and second grade notes that it says i wanted to own a pizza shop so I just always wanted to own a shop by the beach um asbury park's a huge 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 night scene um, and we're doubling down on being open till 2 a.m. And I think, you know, that's one of the main reasons, like 2 a.m., you know, Asbury Park's gonna turn into Hoboken in the mm -hmm. next five years. Yep. And I'm there, I got a 30 year lease. I'm not going nowhere, I'll be there till I'm 56. Couldn't afford the building, um, but I have a lease that, 
you would die for. Yep. You know, so um, I think to lock it in for 30 years, I see a lot of colleagues of mine, or not colleagues, a lot of you know, other, a lot of other peer business yep. owners, and they have great brands. They have really great brands. Some of the best brands I've ever who seen. Are, who are some of the brands you look up to? Uh, in my town? No, just overall just in, in the pizza in industry. General? Yeah. Uh, in the pizza industry, wow. That's a big one. Uh, one of the brands that I look up to the most, I would definitely be Lucali's. Like, you know, him coming to my shop, like, really humbled the shit out of me. Yep. You know what I mean? Because, like, you see this guy, you know, he's been in the pizza industry his, his whole life, and he's got, like, some of the best stuff in the world, like, in the mm -hmm. country. And, like, he comes to my pizza shop in Roseau Park. I'm, like, blown away for the, <laughs> for the really dope episode. That's right. And uh, it was just, I don't know, I just really look up to the guy. Like, I feel like if there's anyone in the pizza industry that's, like, going to be explosive, it's going to be him. Yep. Like, I feel like in the next five years, he's going to be probably one of the greatest pizza makers of all time. Yep. And then going back to Asbury Park, was it different opening up the second location? Was it easier? Was it more difficult? It was a lot. Like, what, what, is, what did it take to open up the second place? It was a lot harder. Uh, we opened up in the heart of covid me mm. signing a 30-year lease in, yep. right before a recession, the biggest recession. I think we're still going to go into the biggest recession, biggest recession yeah. we're ever going to see in our life. Um, but um, I think the hardest part for me was uh, going all in and not getting a private investor. You know wow. what I mean? Yep. And like no loans. Self-funded. No bank was giving out no loans at the time because right. everybody thought the world was ending. Yep. Everybody was pulling their money out of the bank. So the bank had no money to lend anybody. Yep. So I'm here. I signed a 30-year lease. I'm getting ready to build out, go to, go to get this a loan. This is what, 2020? This is 2020. I went, wow. I went to like a million banks. Yeah. No one. Everybody Everyone said wanted, no. Everybody, no. Everybody said yes. They said we'll do it for 25% or 40%, wow. 30%. One bank said 42%. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. You know? So... Um, but at the same time, if you really needed it, you needed it. So I like with Asbury Park, I went all in and I went down to my to the bone. Yep. You know what I mean? Because it cost me pretty. I we got a two floor location, so mm. I built a second floor in there. All the equipment's brand new. Um, so you know, just building a second floor alone alone cost me like fifty, sixty k. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Just for the second floor. Dining. So you really went all in. You put I in all, all your. Savings. I mean, I have a thirty year lease, mm -hmm. so I was just like, you know what. It's um, worth it. Let me go all in. If I want to get a bigger spot, I can always sell it with the lease. It's a beautiful spot. Make yep. my money back. A little bit of profit on top. Got to use it and abuse it. Um, but now that I have it, I'll never sell that place. Yep. We're just yeah. booming. But even, even so, I think what yeah. happens is uh, what I've learned is, and this is to all, all the shop owners that listen, you know, I started Slice in the middle of the 2008 recession. I started oh, wow. Slice in 2009, 2010. Wow. But what I learned was that as the consumer becomes more cost conscious, yeah. they turn to pizza. Yeah. So they, they, they're they ordering more pizza on a monthly basis yeah. and going to a steakhouse less because exactly. they can't afford it. That's why all and my so, friends are working for somebody. Yeah. Uh, just because like when we were in culinary school, everybody wanted a Michelin star. Everybody, every chef's dream yep. that goes to culinary school is to get a Michelin star. Yeah. If I can get a James Beard Award one day, that would be... But who's who's to say that a pizza shop can't? Yeah, right? I think a pizza shop can get a James Beard. Yeah, I definitely can't get a Michelin star, but it definitely could get a James Beard well, for sure. If you if you make that the goal, you could also get a Michelin star. I promise you. All right, let's we'll yeah. see, man. It's just all about where yeah, you want to yeah, be. Yeah, I guess you're you right. Know? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> um, have you noticed a big difference in terms of the business pre and post COVID? Uh, like, what, what are some of the big changes? A lot of people just a lot of people just are explosive at nighttime. Mm -hmm. like, I feel like at nighttime, like during COVID, it was dead. There was not many people partying because there was limited on clubs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So uh, right now with COVID not being like, it's still a thing, but like not being like a, a threat. Yeah. Um, it has brought an explosive amount of business at nighttime. Um, I look at it this way. At nighttime, if you're a shop owner and you're in a town that has a bar, clubs or whatever, if you can just take Friday and Saturday, struggle through those hours that you shouldn't be there, I promise you it will be worth it. So talk. we, we spoke a little bit about this uh, before we started recording, but uh, one of the big decisions you made was to start 
remaining open until two in the morning. Yeah. So you're open until two in the morning. Yeah. And that's been, you said, one of the best decisions you've ever made. It's At first, I was really skeptical about it because, you know, I, I'm a single father of two. You know, it's really tough for me. I only see my kids two times a week, three times a week max. And like for me, like I need my sleep for them. Mm -hmm. So when I see them, um, I'm energized and I have a great time with them. Yeah. I feel like, you know, uh, working through those, you know, 16 hour days, they've been really, really tough. But now that my body's like kind of used to it, uh, it's really great, you know, and uh, we got a big staff now. So I'm not working as much yeah. late night. But at first I was really doing it myself because I didn't want to get hit hard on the payroll. Everybody wants you know, 25 to go now. Right. You know 25 I mean? an hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't going to pay somebody if we're not making money. So, right. um, uh, kinda, so at first you were there, I got you wanted started. to make sure. Yeah. Got it jump started first. Yeah. Now that it's jump started, it's not going to stop. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think, you know, if you're a restaurant owner, shop owner, pizza shop owner, you're looking for something to drive business, open up when your competitors aren't open. Yeah. That's my advice to you. Open up when your competitors say they're done for the day because they're weak and they want to go home. Put the nail in the coffin, stay open, and I promise you, you're going you're gonna to make more money than your competitors. And look, this is one of the, I don't want to say secrets, but this is one of the things that the big chains, Domino's, Papa John's, they know yeah. this. And uh, most of their volume happens after 8, 9 o'clock at night. And you can see that in the trend lines. We have all the data, obviously. And I think, you know, for, for most neighborhoods, look, the, the customer doesn't go to sleep in some cases, especially yeah. if it's a town with a lot of bars and nightclubs, they don't go to sleep till Not three, only. four in the morning, right? And so they want to eat after they're out, after they yeah. go out. And in most towns, the only option is Domino's. But in your case, you've kind of uh, created this uh, yeah. this other option. And you were telling me you're, most of the most of the lines are at your store, not at Domino's. Yeah, yeah, Domino's. You know what it is right now with the workforce being so low and them being a franchise, they're not really capping out. Yeah. Um. So they're not paying twenty five to a pizza pizza right. maker, a real pizza maker. So right now, I think what Domino's issues is, um, they're a franchise and they're not paying cap. Um. So what that means is, right now, you go to a local pizza shop owner. You could walk in as a great pizza maker and make 25 bucks an hour, but you're never going to make that as a domino. So I think what, what happening is now is most of their drivers, most of their delivery drivers are turning into pizza makers because right. they weren't making any money as a driver. Now they're pizza makers. But now once they learn how to make pizza, they're going to leave and go to go, go to my shop or go somewhere else right. to make more money. Because let's face it, we're in America. Everybody wants more. That's right. You know what I mean, so... Um, so I think what Domino's issues right now is they're not paying cap and it's going to, it's going to, I mean, at the end of the day, when you eat Domino's, you don't care what you're eating, but, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, uh, quality control is, is super key when you're running a franchise like that. I've seen so many franchises go downhill with, you know, with quality control. And um, I think, you know, my local Domino's is like, They've gone completely downhill. Yeah. So I think, you know, we've capitalized on that yeah. a lot. Do you think uh, the pizza industry and sort of other other locations nearby, would you consider them competition, community, sort of, uh, you know, close, I don't want to say friends, but peers or both? At first, when we first opened up the shop, I like to, I, I don't consider anyone as competition because I'm confident in what I do. Yeah. And I know that what we do at my pizza shop, we're not doing at yours. Mm -hmm. So my customer base, they yep. will try your shop out, yep. but like my customer base is totally different. We have a customer base full of foodies that travel yep. to my location. So it's not like, we do get a lot of locals. Mm -hmm. We get you know a lot of return customers, but we also have a lot of people that just travel from Connecticut or here. We have such a big TikTok to following. To try the triple yeah. threat. Exactly. So, or the thunder sticks. Or the thunder sticks. Yeah, so... <laughs> It's just uh, I try to I try to be friends with all the pizza shop owners. If they run out of pepperoni, you can come to my shop. I got it. Does that happen though? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Ale House, that's amazing. Tallulah's, any yeah. anytime any of these guys run out of pepperoni, and vice versa. I'm open. Yeah, I'm o I'm not a hater. Right. I me if anybody asks me for advice, I always give it to them because I awesome. always want to see people win. Awesome. Because at the end of the day, when I was 21, nobody wanted to give me advice. Yeah. And I wish I had a little speck. You a know, little a little advice. speck of advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. Um, what would be the the one piece of advice you'd give any either existing operator or future operator? <sighs> if you're going to look to open up a pizzeria right now in 2022, open up a pizza truck. And this is why I'm telling you to open up a pizza truck. 
Right now, there's no competition in the pizza truck game. There's absolutely none. If you want to book weddings, you can be you could crush weddings for the rest of your life and never see a customer and never do a customer transaction for the rest of your life. You get paid Just events. You get paid before you even go to the event. Right. It's amazing. It's yeah. like you get paid. Sometimes the customer pays you oh, three weeks before because they love mm. you. You know what I mean? So yep. now I have your three. The only thing that sucks about that is now I have your, you know, <laughs> you're gonna spend your it. full money. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to spend it before yeah. you go. <laughs> but uh, I just like, if I can tell anybody that's going to dump 200 G's into a pizzeria and be married to it and maybe not make it, spend 50 G's, get a pizza truck, do it whenever you want. And you can book it whenever you want. Right. If you don't do great, get a job. You can still book it whenever you want. If you don't, a, a set, if you don't right. feel satisfied with that, you can flip it, make money, and now you made money on it. Yep. You used it, mm. and now it's not in your hair no more, and now you have your job. Right. Versus opening up a pizza shop, losing your life. Yep. Now whoever steps in there gets a free pizza shop because you just bought everything brand new for him. Right. You know what I mean? It yep. happens all the time. My the restaurant, time. my restaurant uh, supply guy, he cleans people out. I yep. wish I could have his job because so many people are going out of business. I wish I could just buy ovens for pennies on a dollar because the guy has nothing to offer. That's he right. needs he needs it. Yeah. So um, I so don't, a food truck. I would do pizza truck. Yeah. Pizza truck and propane. If you want to get a Neapolitan oven and start a coal for two hours and be there for an extra four hours because you can't drive with a hot coal in your oven, then do that. You're gonna waste your time. Yeah. So I have 200 pounds of propane. Got a real baker's pride on my oven. When I get there, I turn it on, hour and a half, I chill, come back. When I leave the party, I turn it off and I go home. That's There's it. no Done. cleanup. The only yeah. cleanup I have is a little brushing of flour and that's it. That's it. You know and you're I mean? only making pizza, right? Like you're and not making, you don't back, have a kitchen. Yeah. And I go back to my, I only have pizza oven and three fryers. That's it. Yep. I didn't want to grill. I don't want to do any grilling. I'm not making no cheesesteaks. It's not for that. Right. Because when you do cheesesteaks, grilling, that's grease, that's... A lot of cleaning. When you got a pizza truck, there's no dishes. Right. There's no dishes. So you're frying stuff, no dishes. Just paper plates. Paper plates, <laughs> paper, paper materials. If you want, I got a pizza truck franchise ready to go for you guys. You can hit me up. I have it built out for you in two weeks. So you let me know. You got it. Uh, fast forward five years, last question. What is, uh, what's the vision for you and Joe's Five years from now. Uh, I want to be in Miami, Vegas. In Miami, Vegas? Vegas, Some more locations. Vegas has been my... I've been trying to get to Vegas since I opened. Mm. But then I had two kids. And Why Vegas? I just feel like it's the, every chef's dream to open up on the Strip. I feel like if you make it to the Strip, you make it, mm. you're making it in life. Yep. If you can open for 24 hours and make money for 24 hours... Just nonstop. I've literally gone to Vegas all the time and like... I never sleep when I'm there. So like, I know people that will eat a slice of pizza at six in the morning because that's what time, it's like 12 o'clock to them. You that's know what right. I mean? Like, so that's like, right. uh, and I see Buddy Velasco absolutely killing the pizza game out mm -hmm. there. Um, and he doubled down on it. I feel like, you know, he was like, all right, you know, I'm not really doing, you know, much with the baking. You know, people aren't really buying cookies, but you know, they'll, they'll, they'll buy, buy pizza. pizza. <laughs> they'll, and now he's selling six, seven, $8 slices and he's crushing the game. So he changed his business model overnight and Dub probably made like another 24 million or whatever because right. he's got a shop in every hotel. Right. So he monopolized it and you know, kudos to him. He got there before. So I in five years, we're gonna have Joe's in, in Vegas, Joe's in Miami, Hopefully. multiple locations and Hopefully. just keep growing. And a wing franchise. Yeah. And a wing franchise. Yeah. Can't disclose the name yet. Uh, just cause uh, I feel like right now, like we're gonna go through like a little inflation on wings, but like, everybody's going to fall back on it and mm. try to go like vegan yep. or whatever. But like, uh, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, meat prices will go down eventually. Yep. Uh, and I want to capitalize on it. So awesome. I feel like, you know, everything's going to go down eventually. So uh, when you launch that, you're going to come back. We'll talk about it. Definitely. Sounds good. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank Anytime, you so much. Man. It was great meeting you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. It's a pleasure here.